Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about overcoming temptation. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your holy written word. Father, we thank you. Your words are truth. Father, we thank you so much. Your words are life, healing, health and medicine to all our flesh. Father, we thank you so much. Your words are nourishing us. Father, we thank you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. Father, we thank you so much. Your words are making us wise and able to inherit the blessing. Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we thank you for ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we thank you so much for answers and solutions. Father, we thank you so much for word in due season. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, God is a good God and His Word is good. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, God's Word nourishes our souls. God's Word will quicken our soul. God's Word will minister healing to our body. You know, the Bible says that His words are healing, health, medicine to our flesh. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important to, you know, regularly feed in God's word. Just keep on reading, keep on reading, keep studying, keep hearing, keep meditating in the word of God. It, it will bless your spirit, soul and body. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to our text. Go with me to Genesis chapter 3. And let's begin from verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, this passage talks about the fall of man. Right? Man was given an exalted position with God. God made man in his own image, in his likeness. He had crowned him with glory and honor and blessed him and gave all of the earth into his hands and all the creations and like, you know, the birds, the animals and the um, fishes and um, basically the whole earth into his hands. And... Um, man because of his sin he fell from that exalted position and he fell badly right previously he was ruler over everything now he became the slave of devil he came under the dominion of the devil and that that's then that's a fall isn't it now um in this passage the holy ghost reveals to us how man was tempted by the devil what was the tactics the devil used and this is so important for us to understand because if you can understand this you can overcome temptation you can overcome when the devil brings uh, temptation in your life you can resist him successfully so that's why we are going to study this passage in the previous um, uh, messages we looked at uh, how God looks at overcoming temptation and uh, how important it is in his eyes and how he, he has made us as overcomers let's look at a couple of verses and then we will go back and we will come back to genesis chapter 3 i want to read these two verses repeatedly i want you to get this into your system first john chapter 4 look at this verse 4 
you are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so god is saying we have overcome the devil his forces the antichrist the false spirits the false doctrines error and so on how have we overcome them and why because we are born of god god is a winner god is an overcomer we are his children made in his image and in his likeness therefore we are also overcomers we have overcome them not only that the greater one the almighty god who is greater than the devil and greater than the world and greater than all the antichrist and his tactics and deceptions you know the greater one is living in us therefore we overcome i say this with me i'm born of god i am created in the image and likeness of god i am a winner the greater one the almighty god is dwelling in me god always leads me in triumph god always leads me in victory hallelujah to jesus hallelujah look at this chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith all the sin in the world all the false doctrines all the temptations all the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life all of that whatsoever is in the world we are born of god and we overcome that hallelujah to jesus so when you think about yourself don't think about yourself saying oh boy i'm too weak i'm too weak i'm too weak i see i don't don't seem to be able to overcome these things i i i don't be i'm not able to discern i'm not able to accept the word of god you know the, the things like that you know pe- people magnify their weakness now stop saying those things if you have believed in the lord jesus if you are born again right then start saying i'm born of god i'm an overcomer I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. All things are new. All things are of God. I'm a workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God ordained beforehand that I should walk in them. You know say that because that's the truth about you. You know God knows the truth about you. God knows the actual truth about you. Often times we just look at our weakness, we look at our frailties, we look at our body and the flesh and we we think about our past experiences, past failures and so on. We kind of uh, bring conclude uh, who we are based on those things. You know, but God Almighty made you. God created you. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? God planned you, desired you, loved you and created you. He knows what he has made. And he says that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. He says that you are his workmanship created unto good works. He says that you are an overcomer. And that's what you should say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take time to meditate on these truths about who you are in Christ Jesus. The more you learn them, the more you accept them, believe them and make it a part of your thinking, your belief and your confession, the more victorious you will be. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, keep those thoughts in mind. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Now uh, we have already looked at the various rewards that God gives for overcoming. In God's eyes overcoming is a very important part of Christian life. God wants every Christian to overcome. We looked at uh, the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 and we see how God wants people to overcome. Let's just look at one verse. Hallelujah. Go with me to chapter 3. and let's read um, verse uh, 21 to him that overcomes i will grant to sit with me in my throne even as i also overcame and i'm set down with my father in his throne you know jesus has given this exalted has been given this exalted position because he overcame he came to this earth fulfilled his mission right Br- brought about the redemption of mankind defeated sin defeated the devil he shed his blood to redeem the mankind 
and because he has done these things because he did what he was called to do because he overcame sin he overcame the world he overcame the devil you know god has exalted him above every name that is named right and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality power might and dominion you understand that 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 exaltation that throne the right to rule was not given to him because he <coughs> you know because he is god's son no no it was given to him because he overcame go with me to philippians philippians chapter 2 look at this verse 5 onwards let this mind be in you which was which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men you know god almighty the king of kings god of gods the blessed one he came down to this earth and he laid aside his divine qualities right his uh, his uh, almighty qualities and he came down in the form of a servant in the likeness of men can you imagine that god who fills everything restricting himself to a body and coming down as a man and that's humbling and that that's humility <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you know people cannot let go of a few riches or few luxuries right god laid aside his divine abilities and came down as a man to redeem us think about that mm? hallelujah and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient right he became obedient to the heavenly father even unto death even the death of the cross wherefore because he did all these things god also highly exalted him and and gave him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth mm? every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father can you see this such exaltation such greatness was bestowed upon jesus because he overcame because he completed the plan of redemption because he obeyed god to the full extent do you understand this hallelujah so the rewards of heaven the rewards that we are going to have for eternity are based on how well we overcome in this life right there is a difference between the blessing and reward i want to remind you of this right there is a difference between blessing and reward blessing is given to us by grace and it is received by faith but the rewards of eternity and certain rewards in this earth they are a result of how we live how we overcome how we please god how well we fulfill god's will how faithful we are to what he has called us to do you understand that right hallelujah to jesus glory be to god all right now keeping these thoughts in mind let's also go to um, genesis chapter 3 genesis chapter 3 Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now let's begin from verse 1. We are going to go verse by verse in this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. I want you to notice this. You know, the devil did not choose a lion or an elephant to kind of force Adam into submission. He cannot do that. See, Adam was not an ordinary weak being. Adam was the son of God. Adam was just below God, the Bible says. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, the hierarchy before God made Adam was God, uh, the archangels and the higher category of angels, the archangels, and uh, then you have uh, uh, the cherubims, seraphims, and, uh, and then you have uh, or some other c- category of angels, and then uh, uh, the demons, the devil, and so on. Right after the fall, Lucifer was an archangel, but then he sinned and he fell, and he be- he w- he was thrown down to the pit of hell. Right, he lost his position, he lost his anointing. So God, the archangel, and the other higher category angels, and then the uh, ordinary angels, and then below them you had um, the devil and so on, yeah, the devil and his forces. Now. After God created Adam, the hierarchy changed. God, Adam, b- just below God, Adam, and below Adam, archangels in the other category of angels, and below them the devil and his forces. Right. So the devil could not just waltz in and discern and subdue Adam. Adam was given the ability to subdue the devil. If the devil had come directly in terms of uh, with force and kind of waged war on Adam, Adam would have won and easily. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. God blessed them. God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So notice, um, the Bible says God gave Adam the ability to subdue. What do we subdue? We don't subdue good things. We don't subdue obedience. We don't subdue conformity. What do we subdue? We subdue rebellion. Right? See, we subdue opposition. We subdue the enemy. Alright? So, see, for example, if you are a king, you don't subdue your uh, uh, supporters. No. You don't subdue the good citizens. You don't subdue good people. You don't subdue, you know, good works. Right? What do you subdue? You subdue evil. You subdue rebellion against your rule. You subdue opposition. You subdue your adversaries, enemies, right? So, what did God mean when he said subdue? He knew that there is a devil. And he knew that the devil is going to come against Adam. So, God gave Adam the ability to subdue. Right? See, he was already equipped to win. Adam was thoroughly equipped to overcome the devil. God did not leave him helpless. God gave him the ability to subdue. God gave him dominion, authority over all of earth. So if the devil comes, he can exercise his dominion. He can exercise his ability to subdue. He could have defeated the devil. No matter what way he came in, Adam could have done that. Whether he came by force or whether he came by subtlety or whether he came with deception, whatever method the devil chose whatever weapon the devil dis, you know, used against Adam Adam was thoroughly equipped to win totally and God has already warned him about the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he has already given him a commandment saying don't eat it if you eat it you will die he was given a very specific commandment right and um, on top of it, God came down with them uh, to fellowship with them, right, in the cool of the day. Adam and Eve had access to God. Access, like, you know, that kind of access we still don't, uh, you know, have, don't experience today. And we do it by faith. Adam did it, you know, literally, physically, you know. God came down, he saw God, he fellowshiped with God. Right. Now, he, he could have learnt a lot. Now, I don't believe that, you know, this happened, uh, you know, within a few days after Adam and Eve were, correct, uh, we were created. Because, you know, God always gives you time to prepare. 
right always gives you time to prepare before you are exposed to any kind of danger or any kind of opposition you know for example you know jesus what well, before he faced the devil uh, right in matthew chapter 4 and in luke chapter 4 uh, he he was he had 30 years of preparation and jesus used it very wisely right jesus in the bible says jesus increased in wisdom he increased in wisdom right in the word for 30 years now you go with me to luke chapter um, luke chapter 2 verse 40 look at this you know the holy ghost could have um mentioned a lot of things about the childhood of jesus right and his teenage and his uh, life as a young man he, he could have mentioned a lot of things and i'm sure there were a lot of things that were worthy of mention right but the holy ghost chose to reveal only a very few things to us and what did he choose to reveal he chose to reveal to us the devotion that jesus had towards scripture towards bible and his increase in wisdom um before we go back to revelation i want you to look at this i mean uh, before we go back to genesis i want you to look at this particular um, you know part of uh, the life of jesus look at verse 40 and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of god was upon him right so this is talking about his childhood from the time um joseph mary and jesus came back to nazareth till the time he was 12 years old what was jesus doing he was growing physically yes and notice the other things that are mentioned he waxed strong in spirit and filled with wisdom you know for both those things you need plenty of word of god if you are going to become strong in spirit you need to be nourished with the word of god the word of god is the is food for your spirit jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god the word of god nourishes us you know in corinthians paul talks about the word as milk and meat in hebrews again paul talks about uh, uh, the word of god as milk and meat right so notice the bible is, the holy spirit is using uh, is comparing the word of god to food items why because the word of god nourishes us nourishes our spirit the word of god quickens our soul right that's why jesus was strong in spirit and notice he was filled with wisdom now if you are empty of the word of god you are not going to be filled with wisdom no no in order to be filled with wisdom you you should be devoted to the bible right you you should be someone who reads studies hears and meditates in the word hallelujah and jesus did plenty of it look at this as a result of this by the time he was 12 the holy ghost is giving us a picture of uh, the results right you you know how jesus um, mary and joseph went to the um, you know festival in um, jerusalem and while returning you know in those days uh, the the whole village and the whole city you know all of them were close they had multiple relatives everybody knew each other so they kind of let uh, jesus free and um, yeah, they thought he's playing with other boys you know traveling with the relatives and uh, so they didn't really you know go and look for him but after some time when they saw that he didn't show up at all so they started looking with among the relatives found he was not with them and they searched him for three days right and finally they found him in the temple now if if uh, you're going to be in the temple for three days and jesus all the time he was there and what was he doing look at this verse um, 46 it came to pass that after 3 days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions notice he he, he was doing what a child a 12 year old child sitting in the temple listening to the word of god now not just you know acting like listening not sitting there and dozing off not whiling away time no no he was sitting there 
actively listening to what they are saying understanding what they are saying grasping what they are saying and then asking them intelligent questions about what is being said right and notice verse 47 and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers you know it takes a lot to astonish these doctors of the law and these guys can quote scriptures in their sleep they know scriptures they 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 devoted their time to study this eh no not a little bit of devotion in the morning no no these guys spend hours studying it right hours in a, in the been the in their training in their preparation they read a lot and after being trained they still read a lot right they study they read they debate they talk about it they 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 you know they talk about it with other scholars and th- this is their life you understand that the script the scriptures is their life right to astonish these boys it's going to take a lot and jesus he astonished them as a 12 year old do you see this hmm Hallelujah what does this show us see for Jesus for a boy of that age to sit in the temple that itself says a lot that means he's used to it right if you study history they say Mary's father was 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 part of um, you know a synagogue and he was responsible for teaching he, he was kind of a scholar right that's what they say uh, and um, it Mary grew up like that na yeah. and uh, what do you think mary did when jesus was growing up hmm what do you think he she did uh, the, jesus had access to the scrolls those days they didn't have bibles like this like us it wasn't easily available you had to bring the scrolls that means either you go to the synagogue to read it or you pay loads of money to buy those scrolls and keep a copy in your house it was not cheap those scrolls were not cheap right that means jesus spent a lot of time in the synagogue reading the scriptures and he had a copy of it at his home to read and study them then jesus invested plenty of time in the scriptures notice after this the bible says after this experience he went back to his house right so after he went back to his house again what does the bible say and jesus increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and man so notice again the bible emphasizes that he increased in wisdom from that time from age 12 till 30 before he was manifested publicly right for so for 30 years what did jesus do he trained in the word of god reading studying meditating right jesus kept increasing 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 in wisdom so by the time jesus was taken to uh, the desert by the holy spirit to be tempted of the devil jesus knew the word of god really really knew about the word of god not just one verse here or there he he knew verses for verses and he had backup verses for that he knows which verse connects to where and he had the holy spirit in him to 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 empower right that even more right hallelujah you know the anointing that was given to jesus was not just the anointing of power hallelujah hallelujah to jesus i want you to look at this go with me to um isaiah isaiah as here chapter 11 look at the anointing that was given to jesus when god filled jesus with the holy spirit look at what it meant right verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him what attributes of the holy spirit was jesus filled with notice this the spirit of wisdom understanding counsel and might knowledge and of the fear of the lord right notice it was not just you know often we spoke we speak about the miracles of that jesus performed true we should miracles are great i love speaking about miracles right 
ஐ ஐ லைக் டு மெடிடேட் ஆன் தம் ஐ லைக் டு திங்க் அபவுட் தம் ஐம் ஆஃபன் அம் மே அமேஸ்ட் அட் வாட் காட் கேன் டூ அண்ட் வாட் காட் ஹஸ் டன் you know it's so important to read study and meditate on the miracles you know if you heard anything about my teaching right if you followed me for some time you know we are big in believing god god's almighty power and the miracles right we are big on that we love miracles right now but that that was not the only aspect of the anointing that was upon jesus in fact it was one part of what jesus was anointed with notice the different aspects one wisdom two understanding three counsel four might five knowledge and six the fear of the lord and then of course the holy spirit the holiness right notice all this right out of this notice how much is wisdom understanding counsel and knowledge okay right? very important to look, to look at this so jesus was filled with wisdom the bible says right <laughs> you understand this so when you look at jesus don't look at him only from the angle of power and might which is good which we should don't don't misunderstand me power might miracles are very important right but that's not the only aspect of Je- about jesus jesus was filled with wisdom and the anointing of the holy spirit that was upon, upon jesus had a lot to do with wisdom knowledge understanding and counsel also hallelujah right so by the time jesus went to face the devil in the wilderness jesus was totally equipped to overcome him to overcome him hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we'll continue to talk about this more right in the in the next message uh, so what i want to say to you is this you are also equipped see you are a child of god you are born of god you are filled with the holy spirit now if you haven't received the fullness of the holy spirit what are you waiting for right receive it now it's available for you right and then we have been given the word of god right so all the those things which were given to jesus God the Father through Jesus has given to us also through Jesus we have been given the privilege of becoming sons of God through Jesus we have been given the fullness of the holy spirit right through Jesus we have been given the covenant through the blood of Jesus we have a covenant with the almighty God God has made his word available to us we have everything that we need to win hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus All right then. Um thank you so much for listening. We will continue this teaching on Monday. And uh, tomorrow we are going to be you know publishing the same message in um, Tamil. Hallelujah. Uh please to share our audio and video messages with your friends, family, relatives, coworkers, people who need the word, people who love the word, relatives, um uh, people who who you know believers and saints of God, share it with them. God will bless you. God will honor you. and thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon